huh? This is what actually happens when you do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a, a duplex receptacle and I want to put my ethernet jack somewhere in proximity to this. Um, that way the unsightliness of the jacks on the wall are kind of clumped together in one area and I don't have a lot of drywall with just these outlets all over, over the place. Okay, So by and large put them by where there's another receptacle already. Then you got to find where the studs are. So I want you to listen. This is higher pitched than this. This this is lower. This is higher. So there's not a stud here because it's, it's more hollow sounding. There is a stud here. So what I'm going to do, I think, I think it's also hollow here. I'm going to drill a pilot hole right over here in line with the middle of this guy. So I put a little mark here on the wall. I'm going to take a small bit. And you'll and you'll you'll notice that my drill started to go in and then it pushed all the way through. So I know that there's no stud right here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bigger bit. This is a Sorry, you guys can't really see that. This is a quarter inch bit, okay? This was just a really thin bit that I had in my, like one of my thinnest ones, okay? Now I take a bigger bit and widen out that hole. It's just a really small camera. It's got a little light on the end. I got this off Amazon for 20 bucks. Honestly, this one was really cheap and the, like the light's not good and the picture's kind of blurry, so I'm probably gonna return it and get like a nicer one. But this is a quarter inch on the end. I drilled a quarter inch hole. So I'm going to stick this little guy into the hole just to see where I'm at. And I'm just going to pan around down here so I can see what's in my wall. Okay. And I want to make sure that like, you know, I didn't hit anything behind the wall or like I didn't hit an electrical box or something or blah, blah, blah. So I'm just looking to see, okay, this is an open stud cavity. It looks like I'm almost right in the middle of it. I could have gone further this way or this way. Fifteen and a quarter actually to the top. Up here. That's fifteen and a quarter. Now, before I did this, I used to take up this, my level here, and level this, and then draw a line. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the box out, just like this. That's perfect. Hold that right there. One, two, three, four. This is gonna get really dirty. So I'm gonna turn on the vacuum and I'm just gonna get each side started. Okay, now, I didn't even cut the top side. I cut that side, that side, and that side. Now watch this. Just take your bit, put it in here, and watch this. It should just, just rotates right off there. Now I'll take my, my box and 
Put it in there, it's probably not gonna fit. So I have to do a little bit of adjusting. Yep, it's not gonna fit. So I'll come down here. Um, this is a super long drill bit. I got this at, at the home store, Menards. We got it for like 25 bucks. It's like three feet long and um, it's thin and it's flexible. See how I can move it? I don't know what I'm gonna hit down there. Like, obviously I don't have any electrical down there or any plumbing that's right below me, but I could hit like my floor joists to run this way. So I could hit a floor joist and in which case I need, I need to move to the right or to the left. So I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna drill in the method. I've broken through the floor. We're gonna go downstairs and check to see where I am, okay? The last uh, one, two, four times, I've less than times I've I've hit obstacles every time. I have terrible luck, okay? Um, and then one time I got through nice and clean, but it wasn't easy going. Like I always hit something, I had to adjust or move or go in a different angle or whatever, or I hit an obstacle and I had to weave a wire around something, so it's not always clean and pretty, and that's okay. And the reason I'm not using my Roby drill is because I started, but this thing wasn't strong enough, and it was spinning out, and the clutch wasn't engaging because I, I didn't have enough power, so that's why I had to borrow my neighbor's drill. I'm going to check to see where I am. I'm right in the middle of that top plate. Don't know what happened there. Let me let me check it out. Oh, we're still going through. I'm just gonna go a little more. Then I'm gonna go check down that downstairs. I don't know if I hit something on the other end, so I'm gonna actually back it out. Oops. That's what happened. Look, my bit came off the end of my drill. Gosh, I'm an idiot. I'll take our endoscope and see where we are. I can see my basement floor through here. Wow. There's the hole that I'm looking at. Okay. There's the hole, and if I push it down, watch. See that? That's my couch downstairs. Ha! So this worked. That's the hole. Now, here's the bit, right? And this is wider than I need, so I could fit two Ethernet cables through on this thing. And this little part right here gets it started. Um, and it kind of pulls the bit in and then it goes through this section. So let's go downstairs and check out what we got. The floor, oh look. There is the hole that we came out. We were almost right in the middle of the two joists, okay? And I drilled the one on the other room, which is right there. Here's this one. So it ended up coming right between these two cracks, okay? Major pain in the butt. So what I had to do was drill a side hole through here to get up to there and then fish it out this side and then come over. This one came out right next to my dryer vent, like way up there. And it basically, I almost ended up puncturing my actual dryer vent thing. So it's really close to that, so I had to sneak it out there. So what I'm trying to tell you is, it's not always gonna be nice and pretty like this example was. In fact, most of the time, it was not. And I got a bunch of these things on Amazon these were $5, these Velcro ties. And then I got these things from the home store. These are some cable clips. I just screw this in to the wall and then I use a zip tie on top of that. So here's an example of what it looks like. This right here, see that? I don't know how that happened but that needs to be repaired or I need a new wire in here, okay? You probably shouldn't even use zip, zip ties, but I am. I'm just gonna let it sit there. As long as it's not moving, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Now, this wire that I have, this is category six. This is not gonna be long enough to reach all the way back to my uh, patch panel, but I can use a network coupler just to extend it and it should be fine. Before you run the cable, guys, you wanna this stuff has got a natural bend to it, so 
once I get down there, I'm going to straighten it all out before I pull, like, put it up in the ceiling and stuff because I don't want it to be like turning. I want it to be nice, nice and straight. So I want to get rid of that natural bend. So I just undo this. See how it's spinning out? Undo that. Before we do that, we got to strip the wire and punch it down. So I'm going to cut off a little bit. Start fresh. Don't go too hard here because you will cut the underlying wires. You just want to get a nick in it so that you can then pull it off. That might be enough. Then you can twist it. Now on the side of this keystone, there's a little standard. So we're going to do the 568B, so we're going to do the bottom one. So orange, white, and then orange, blue, white, blue, and then on this side we're going to go brown, white, brown, green, white, green. I got this center piece of plastic to help to give it some rig rigidity and to separate the wires from one another. I'm going to slip that. Being careful not to cut the actual wires. Now, when you use this punch down tool, these things can be really fragile. And this back one, I actually busted off this, this back piece of plastic that's sitting out here, like this back little thing in particular, I busted that off. So make sure that you're going straight down in, in, into it. Hold it down. There. Okay, so I got those other ones in the other side. Now this cap still needs to go on here, so I need to wiggle these guys because my punch down tool is not very good. I got There's the top. There's the other side. And this little guy clips on top of here. I don't I don't have much. I I've been taking just a couple And this does not snap in. It's supposed to, but let's push it down firm. Then I'm actually just gonna take a little piece of tape and put it right over the top of here. Just like that. Snap that in. I like to leave a little bit extra actually in the wall just it just in, in case I ever need to like redo this, this connection or something. So I pull it up, try to leave a little extra in there there so I don't like that. Let's see if I can twist this another way or something so it doesn't want to. I don't like there to be a lot of tension on that. 